Scientists have modeled what Earth would look like in 500 years if our planet keeps warming up at the present rate. What they found out would surprise you. A group of environmental scientists have combined to model the impact of climate change all the way up to the year 2500. After publishing their findings in Global Change Biology, the researchers wrote in the conversation that Earth will gradually become uninhabitable if governments across the globe do not act more strongly to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The study's results show that the Amazon will change into a place that is too hot and dry for plants to grow in, leaving a barren wasteland with no vegetation and little human activity. In the American Midwest, the model predicts that today's cornfield prairies will be replaced by a hot and humid subtropical climate where AI drones tend to strange plants engineered from oil palms. In the Indian subcontinent, the study predicts that humans would have to wear air-conditioned suits and use farming drones to grow food in the intense heat and humidity. The scientists say the modeling reveals a future where agriculture and humans have moved toward the poles to escape the intense heat and humidity of the equatorial regions. The researchers say long-term future models like theirs are not factored into mainstream climate planning. They say these should be, as humans who are born today will be in their 70s by 2099, and we should start to ask what the world would look like for their children and grandchildren. The recent heat wave in the states of Oregon and Washington caused a lot of damage to roadways. In one post on Twitter, a user based in Portland shared photos of a nearby road and said their house began to shake as the road's concrete started to split. The user wrote, The house started to shake and we thought it was an earthquake. But no, the road was so hot it literally buckled. Here's how it happened. Newsweek reports that roads are buckling and breaking apart from the unprecedented hot weather that's been hitting the Pacific Northwest region of the U.S. In the usually cool Portland, temperatures soar to 47 degrees Celsius on Monday, June 28th. Scientists say the problem is that Oregon's roadways were not designed to survive such heat. These roadways are made of concrete slabs that contract in cold weather and expand in hot weather. The slabs were shaped with gaps between them, and these gaps are there to create room for the concrete when it expands. However, these gaps are only big enough to make room for the kind of expansion that happens during normal temperature highs, and the recent heat wave created temperatures so high that the concrete slabs expanded so much that they pushed against each other, causing the slabs to break and buckle. Roads that were made of asphalt, on the other hand, often became so hot that they became soft like toffee, and thus became deformed by large numbers of heavy vehicles driving over them. Meanwhile, workers ventured out last week in the blistering heat to put cracked concrete and asphalt roadways back together. Steel drawbridges were doused with water to make sure they wouldn't swell shut under the oppressive heat. North of the border, a weather station in Lytton, British Columbia, notched the highest temperature in Canada's recorded history, a mind-melting 121 degrees Fahrenheit, or 49.6 degrees Celsius. Soon after that, the town was destroyed by a wildfire. The Amazon used to be praised as our planet's lungs, absorbing a lot of Earth's carbon dioxide. However, things are going very wrong in the Amazon, and it's now emitting a lot more carbon dioxide than it can absorb. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that scientists have recently confirmed that the Amazon rainforest is now emitting more carbon dioxide than it is able to absorb, and its emissions amount to a billion tons of carbon dioxide a year. The giant forest had previously been a carbon sink, absorbing the airborne carbon that is driving the climate crisis. Sadly, the Amazon is now causing the acceleration of the climate crisis, according to researchers. Most of the emissions are caused by fires, many deliberately set to clear land for beef and soy production. But even without the fires, hotter temperatures and droughts mean the southeastern Amazon has become a source of carbon dioxide rather than a sink. The scientists said the discovery that part of the Amazon was emitting carbon even without fires was particularly worrying. They said it was most likely the result of each year's deforestation and fires making adjacent forests more susceptible the next year. The trees produce much of the region's rain, so fewer trees means more severe droughts and heat waves, which cause more tree deaths and fires. The study's lead researcher said, The first of very bad news is that forest burning produces around three times more carbon dioxide than the forest absorbs. The second bad news is that the places where deforestation is 30% or more show carbon emissions 10 times higher than where deforestation is lower than 20%. What's your favorite part of summer? Hanging out at the beach with all your friends? Playing frisbee with all your friends? How about the killer heat waves that have come to destroy us all? If you went for option number two, the US right now has almost certainly been the place to be for the past few days. Here's what you need to know. 
A severe heat wave affecting 40 million Americans has seen temperatures over 100 degrees Fahrenheit beat records in Wyoming, Utah, Arizona, and Southern California, according to NBC News. It has two main causes, according to the Associated Press. First, a heat dome or area of high pressure. Sinking air from the Earth's atmosphere prevents air near the ground from rising. That sinking air operates like a cap, trapping warm ground air in place, according to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Without rising air, there is also no rain and nothing to stop hot air from becoming hotter. That high pressure works in combination with a two-decade dry spell that has sucked moisture out of soil in much of the western United States. Usually, some of the sun's heat evaporates moisture in the soil, but according to the Associated Press, scientists say the western soil is now so dry that the energy is instead used to make the air even warmer. As a consequence of the extreme heat, at least 14 new wildfires broke out this week in Montana and Wyoming alone. Firefighters also fought fires in Arizona and New Mexico, with U.S. Department of Agriculture meteorologist Gina Palma saying these were certainly conditions that we would not normally see in June. Power networks across the country have also been strained due to increased use of air conditioning, according to Reuters. Operators in California asked homeowners across the state to conserve energy in the late afternoon and evening when demand surges. In graphs published on its website, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency showed that heat waves like this are almost three times as frequent as they were in the 1960s, increasing steadily for over 60 years. Furthermore, the duration of these heat waves is now almost a full day longer. What we are watching here is climate change, and at least part of it is man-made, according to the Associated Press. A study published last year in the journal Science found that man-made climate change tied to greenhouse gas emissions is responsible for around half of the historic drought that caused the drying out of the soil. Added to this, NASA's website helpfully explains that human activities, such as burning fuel to power factories, cars, and buses, cause the atmosphere to trap more heat than it used to, which increases the Earth's average temperature. Now, of course, heat waves have always occurred. The American Meteorological Society simply defines a heat wave as a period of abnormally and uncomfortably hot and usually humid weather, which we all know was hardly unheard of before. But the point is this: if the Earth's overall average temperature is higher, existing factors like heat domes can more readily push us over into extreme heat, particularly as some defenses against that heat, like the moisture in the soil, are also taken away. Hence, you know, America keeps doing that whole thing where it sets on fire a lot, which it didn't really seem to do as often before. The consequences of all this are not just great action shots of massive fires on TV either. Reuters interviewed one Phoenix resident who described the situation in the U.S. right now as feeling somewhat apocalyptic, and they had a point. According to the WHO, more than 166,000 people in the world died due to extreme temperatures between 1998 and 2017. What's more, between 2030 and 2050, climate change is expected to cause approximately 250,000 additional deaths per year from malnutrition, malaria, diarrhea, and heat stress. The only response to this, that is anything less than a collective death wish, is a rapid reduction in fossil fuel use. Production of coal, oil, and gas must fall by 6% year on year until 2030 to keep global heating under the 1.5 degrees Celsius target agreed in the Paris Accord, according to one UN report. On Monday, August 9th, the UN's science panel published a study that shows how humanity is running out of time to do something about the steady increase in global temperature. On Tuesday, a professor published a short list of simple solutions that would solve the crisis. The professor's article is called "We Have Four Years Left to Keep Warming to 1.5 Degrees Celsius." Here's how we can do it. A day after the UN's science panel warned that humanity has only four years left to stop the trend of increasing global emissions, Matthew Patterson, research director of the Sustainable Consumption Institute at the University of Manchester, published a plan for how this trend can be halted. Writing in the conversation, he says to limit the globe's warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. We need to take these fairly simple steps as soon as possible. First, we need to ban all new coal-fired power plants, all new oil and gas operations, and all airport expansions. In essence, the world could agree to a fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty. Existing coal plants could be rapidly replaced with renewable sources of energy, like wind farms. Radical improvements could be made in the energy efficiency of buildings. Instead of using natural gas for heating and cooking in buildings, people should only use electricity. Ground transport could be decarbonized by a shift to electric. Vehicles such as electric cars, trucks, buses. 
and trains. Last, people should move away from private cars toward bicycling, walking, and public transport. Patterson says achieving all of this in 10 years is technically possible, but there are significant obstacles that are fundamentally political. For instance, fossil fuel companies continue to fight to prevent action that threatens their profitability, lobbying governments to weaken legislation and to protect their subsidies. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.